So let's design a finite state machine. And the word finite in the term finite state machine refers to, well, the fact that there are not an infinite number of states in our finite state machine. We have some finite or you know, fixed number of states. So let's suppose that um, you're having a, a, a tough time staying on a schedule. And so you want to um, make a finite state machine or build a finite state machine to help you do that. So let's suppose the first state in your FSM or finite state machine is the wake up state. So the circle indicates a state. So start in the, in the wake up state. And after you wake up, um, you say, okay, well, do I have time for, um, for, for breakfast? Yeah, so T, you can also write this as T equals, equals one, but for being concise, we just write T. So if T is equal to one, then go to the breakfast state. If you don't have time, Maybe you just go take a shower and don't go to the breakfast state. Hop in the shower and then, um, but if you do have time, go to breakfast and then after breakfast, take a shower. And then after the shower, the next state is going to be um, go to class or watch the video lecture and go to class. And so let's, uh, you know, let's just say after class, go back to the wake up state, not implying anything about falling asleep during lecture or anything like that. Okay, so we have this finite state machine. In our case, it has four states and um, and it has the wake up state, the breakfast state, the shower state, and the class state. And so this is what's called a state transition diagram. State transition diagram. It shows the states and the transition between those states. And so now, well, I mean, it's, it's kind of cool. We have a state transition diagram, but now we need to turn it into logic. And so our first step is to make a state transition table, also called the next state table. So this is our state transition table or next state table. So it either can be called a state transition table or a next state table. And so we have the state transition table um, and we want to take this state transition diagram and turn it into a table. So what we do is we put our current states on the left and our input or inputs. Sometimes we have more than one input. In this case, we just have one, our time input. And um, Remember that these arrows with possible, you know, inputs on a label on them are our transitions between states. And so we have our current state and our input on the left and we have our next state on the right. So we're using our current state and our input to determine what the next state is. So let's say we're, uh, let's start with the first state, the wake up state. If the input T is low, no time, then just go directly. The next state should be the shower state after you wake up. If you're in the wake up state and you do have time, the next state should be the breakfast state. And so we're just taking this, this state transition diagram and turning it into a table, the state transition table, or also called the next state table. Okay, so now let's look at the next state. Let's consider the the breakfast state. So if you're in the breakfast state, well, no matter what, we'll put a don't care here, no matter what the input is, right? There's nothing on that transition. And so no matter what that input is, I'm gonna go to the shower state. And the next state we can consider, let's consider this the shower state. If you're in the shower state, again, doesn't matter what the inputs are there, doesn't depend on inputs. The next state should be the class state. And finally, um, the last state to consider is the class state. If you're in the class state, it doesn't matter um, what the inputs are. The next state should be the wake up state. So here's our transition. 
to the wake up state. And, and then we're done. We've completely specified what our finite state machine does using this, using this table. Okay. Um, well, this seems like, okay, except we need to build this in digital logic and yeah, digital logic understands ones and zeros. We've got some letters in here. So what we can do is we can encode our states. So with four states, in order to encode four unique values, we need at least two bits of state. And so we'll say, okay, let's encode our states. Here we have, um, let's say W, B, S, and C states. So these are our states and our encodings. Call this state bit one to zero. We need at least two bits because we have four states. If we'd had five states, we'd need um, three bits. If we had, you know, nine or ten states, we'd need four bits, and so on. So in this case, we only have four states, so we just need two bits. It's log base two of the number of states. So let's just encode W as zero zero, B as zero one, S as one zero, and C as one one. And now we can take our state transition table or next state table and encode it. So now we have our current state, S one to zero, state bits one to zero, and our inputs, in this case we have a single input at the time input. And now we have our next state and we write this as S one colon zero prime to indicate this is the next state. And now we just take our encodings. So anywhere we see a W, we just put zero, zero. So that top row, we're going to go row by row here. Zero, it's, uh, we can use the same colors here. Zero, zero, if the current state is the W state and time is zero, then the next state should be the S state. S is one, zero, the, the shower state, or maybe to not confuse it with the state, we'll call it the SH state, the shower state. Okay, and so that row's done. Now we just go to the next row and encode that. Well, here we have W, replace that with zero zero our encoding for that state we do have time so time is one and it goes the next state should be the b state or zero one and row by row we go here the next one is b so we go to our our, our encodings b should be zero one time was a don't care so we put don't care there next state should be the shower state or one zero and the next row, we have SH, the shower state is one zero, don't care. Next state should be the C state, which is one one. And the final row in our truth table, turns out this, uh, we can use this as a truth table. C is one one, the C being one one, don't care what the inputs are. The next state should be W, which is zero. Zero. So yeah, this looks a lot like a truth table. We have some some values that are determining some other values. And so now we can use this to write what's called next state equations. So equations for these next state bits. So just like we've um, we've done before with other truth tables, we're going to use those same techniques to write equations. So we'll start with state bit. Uh, next state bit one. So S1 prime is equal to, well, let's see, we want to circle the ones. So we have a S1 bar, S0 bar, and T bar. Or, well, this next one is S1 bar, S0. One bar S zero, 
or the final one here is S1 and S0 bar. And so um, we could have, you know, we could also put this, uh, you know, essentially this truth table into a K map uh, to reduce it. Or in this case, we could um, we could see that this term here, well, one of these terms, but for example, this term could be used to reduce this term S1 bar S0 is going to reduce this term, this left term to S1 bar and T bar, right? Um, as an aside, if we factor out the S1 bar, it's probably the easiest way to see it of those two terms. We go to S0 bar and T bar or S0. Well, this is the simplification theorem and we just get S0 or T bar and then we can distribute that S1 bar again and we get S1 bar S T bar or S1 bar T bar or you know that original term S1 bar S0. Okay so we can do some reduction you know some um, simplification of our of our next state equation as well. Okay so we have our next state equation for state bit one so S1 prime is equal to this s1 bar t bar or s1 bar and we can see that this is actually the xor function s1 bar s0 and so we could reduce the number of gates by um you know by realizing that and just say that's or s1 xor s0 or we could have left it as is it's the same logically and now let's write an equation for um, for S0 prime, for our state bit 0 prime, our next state bit 0. So S0 is going to be, S0 prime is going to be 1, 1, well, S1 bar and S0 bar and T. So S1 bar, S0 bar and, uh, and T. Or the other place you get a one, sum of product form, is S1 and S0 bar. S1 and S0 bar. T is a don't care, so not included in our equation. And again, we can use the a similar thing to get, this is equal to um, S0 bar and T or S1 S zero bar. So now that we have our next state equations, our equations for calculating the next state bits, S1 prime and S0 prime, let's go ahead and um, build the circuit. And so here we have um, a circuit. The first thing we're going to start with is putting in the state register. So this is the register that holds our state bits. So here is our current state on the right, S1 and S sub 0, state bit 1 and state bit 0. Then we always have a clock input and a reset input. And on our state transition diagram, this reset input comes into the, a reset state, in this case, the W state. So when we get a reset on our, our, um, our state register, it's going to reset to the 0, 0 state or the W state. And we always want to reset our system because we don't want it to come up into an unknown state, right? So if we turn on our our x-ray machine, we want, don't want it to start firing x-rays, right? We want it to um, come into a known state. Okay, so we take our state bits and we bring them around because we want to use them to calculate our next state. So we take our state bits, they're coming to be output from our state register, and um, we use them to calculate our next state along with our input 
In this case, we have a single input. We could have multiple, but in this case, one, our input t. Okay, so now we just look at our state next state equations and say, okay, well, let's let's write the equation for next state bit one, so s one prime, which is on the, on the left side of the state register. So we're going to have um, s one bar and t bar, that first product term, or there's our OR gate, or S1 XOR S0. So let's draw the shape of the gates and then connect them. So we have S1 bar and T bar, the bubble there, or S1 XOR S0. And now we implement S1 or S0 prime next state bit zero, and we get S zero bar and T, so S zero bar and T, or S one and S zero bar. And here's our finite state machine in circuit form. We can test and make sure it works by, well, let's let's um, <clears throat> let's draw a timing diagram to see what happens as we get our clock edges. So on each clock edge, we're going to transition between states. So we get a clock edge, and we transition between the W and the B state if T is true. And after the next clock edge, we would transition to the SH state, the shower state, and the next clock edge to the um, to the class state. Next clock edge would be to the W state. Okay, so let's see what, let's draw a timing waveform and see what happens. So let's say we have a clock edge here, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Let's see what our clock edge looks like here. So we get a clock edge, and then, uh, so here's our clock, and then the reset. We always have our reset input. Let's make reset go high and then stay low. And remember time is in the X axis. Um, not this, the signal time, but actual time. And let's do put our input here. So we have an, an input T. And let's say at first we have time and then sometime later, stop having time. Okay, so let's see what our state does. So this is our, st our state bits, S1 colon zero. And let's see what that does. And so we're, we're gonna have some state and see um, how that transitions across time. In fact, let's just do that across time. So um, at, when reset is high, so here's our reset being high, we get a clock edge, let's say it says a synchronous resettable flip-flop or, or state register. And so when the clock edge goes high, our state becomes zero, zero. So we get zero, zero for our state bits, S1 colon zero, and we know that that is in fact the W state. Okay, so we start in the W state as expected when reset goes high. And now, and now let's see what happens. So reset goes low here. And so we can start calculating what the next state should be. So let's see if our state bits are um, one, zero, I mean, zero, zero to start with, right? W in the W state, what happens to our circuit? Well, these state bits come around to uh, feed into our next state logic, to our, to our combinational logic here. And if we have a zero, zero there, well, let's see. If we get a zero, zero, and sometimes I label these just to uh, help me keep track of them. These are not inputs, S1 and S0. The, they're being fed out, again, remember, by the state register, but just to keep track, S1, S0. So we have a zero and T is one. In this case, so we get zero bar, which is one, and one bar, which is zero. So that top bit, this top gate is outputting a zero. 
Okay, so we get zero, or let's see what happens to this one. We get zero, x or zero. Well, that's zero. So we get zero or zero. So this next state bit, s1 prime, is going to be equal to zero. Okay, when we're in the zero, zero state and t is one. Let's see about state bit zero prime. We expect it to be um, to go to the zero one state. So we expect state bit zero, the next state bit zero to be one. Let's see if that happens. So we get a zero bar, which is one, zero bar, and t, which is one. So we get a one or something through this OR gate. And we in fact get our one on next state bit zero. And so at this next clock edge, the state, that next state transitions over or becomes the current state and we get zero, one. And we know that zero, one is the B state, which is what we expected it to go to. If we had time and we were in the W state, in the wake up state. And so now let's transition our, our circuit here over to the zero one state. And let's get back our, there we go. Okay, so now we're in the zero one state. I'll use a different color here just for fun. Let's uh, use blue. So now we're in the zero one state those are our state bits and those come around to be over here what do we expect well if we're in the zero one state we expect to go to the one zero state right because expect to go to the shower state as the next state so let's make sure our circuit calculates that as the next state so if the current state is zero one in other words in the b state we expect our circuit to calculate that the next state should be the shower state or in other words the one zero state Okay, so let's let's see um, what happens there. So we have zero one on our on our current state. Zero one on our current state here. T is still one. Turns out T doesn't determine this um, this next state at all, though. Okay, so we have a zero bar and a one bar. We still get zero on that top out, uh, gate output, and then we have a um, this is our s1 x or s0 so we have 0 x or 1 which is in fact 1 so we get a 1 down here on the output of the x or gate so we get 0 or 1 so s1 prime is our s1 prime next state bit 1 is in fact 1 because we get 0 x or 1 we get a 1 there Okay, and let's see what happens to our um, S0 prime. So we get one bar, which is zero. We already know that gate's going to output a zero because one bar is zero and anything. And here we have S sub one is zero. We get zero and something, also zero. So we get zero or zero, and S sub zero prime is zero. So our next state, just waiting for that clock edge, sitting on the left side of this state register is one zero. At the next clock edge, that becomes the current state. So here's our next clock edge. That becomes the current state and we get one zero, which we know is the shower state or the SH state. And we could keep doing this, right? We, we, we could, um, in fact, let's just do one more round here. If we're in the, now we're in the SH state, let's see what our, our circuit, our next state logic calculates as, um, as the next state. Okay, so now we're in the, let's uh, use a, a, another color here. Let's suppose we're now in the one zero state. So now our circuit is in the one zero state <clears throat> or the shower state. And so we get one, zero. Let's see what our circuit does. So that comes around, feeds back to our next state logic, and we get what well, we expect the next state to be the one, one state, right? If we're in the shower state, the one, zero state, 
independent of any inputs, we expect the next state to be the go to class state. Okay, so let's see if that actually is what we calculate here. Um, so we have one zero, so we get one bar. We know that that's um, gonna be zero. One bar is zero and something. So that top gate outputs a zero. And then we get one X or zero is one. We get zero or one. S one prime is in fact one, as we had hoped and expected. And now let's check out um, the S zero prime or state bit zero, next state bit zero calculation. So we get a zero bar, which is one and T, which is one. or S sub one, which is one X or S zero prime. So one X or one is going to be one. Turns out we have a one or one, and in fact our state bit zero prime is one. And so here's our next state waiting on the left side of this, of the uh, state register. And at the clock edge, this next clock edge, we're going to get a transition to the next state. That next state is going to become the current state. And we get 1, 1, which is the going to class state. And so forth, right? So our circuit here is now performing this um, finite state machine, or it's our circuit implementation of the FSM. And so now, we can look at this and say, okay, well, pretty good, right? We could expect the next state at the next clock edge, right? We look at this and we expect the next state that our circuit would calculate that the next state is the W, back to the W state or the zero, zero state and so forth. And so we look at our, um, at our state transition diagram and we could also put some outputs into this, um, into this finite state machine to see what that does. So let's suppose we have, um, let's, let's annotate our, our uh, state transition diagram so that it has some outputs in it. Let's suppose whenever we're in the cla class state that we have some output, maybe it's the, um, you know, the happy output. There's like an LED that lights up. So if we get an H is one, then, you know, it's connected to some LED that, you know, lights up and says, oh yeah, we're happy we're in class. And so um, we label that on the state itself. So we can just write H if you wanted to, you could write H equals one, but again, for conciseness, we just write, uh, we just write H. That means that H is asserted in that state. And again, for conciseness, we don't list it as zero in the other states. We only list it in the states that it's one. It wouldn't be wrong to write H equals zero in the other states. And so, now to calculate this, well, <clears throat> we just want our, our happy LED to turn on in the class state. So we write what's called an output table. Output table. And this output table has the current state on the left and the output or outputs. We could have multiple. In this case, we just have one, the happy um, signal on the right. So we have our current state. S1 to S0, I could have also written that as S1 colon zero. It's the same as S1, S0. And we can either go to the directly to the encoded or we could put, right, for each state, W, B, shower, and class state, what do we want the happy LED or happy output to be? We want it to be zero, 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 and only one in this class state. And now we can use our encodings zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. And this looks a lot like a truth table. So now I can write an equation for this happy LED. So we would have H is equal to, well, this is just the and function. So H equals S1 and S0. And so now I modify my circuit to output. So now we have some, <clears throat> some output logic here to output our, um, our happy signal based just on the current state.
And so we can see that we label, also label again, we label our output within a current state circle. And so we can also um, put this onto our, our timing diagram. Well, when would, uh, when would H assert? I'll put it up here for, for space reasons. Normally we would put this down here, but H would assert in the class state. So here would be our timing diagram for that. So let's recap what our design procedure was. So we started by um, identifying what our inputs and outputs were. So um, our inputs were T. We drew like a black box diagram. We had an input of T. We only had a single input. We could have had multiple, but in the last example, we had a single input T and our output was the happy output. And finite state machines always have clock and reset as inputs. So we identify our inputs beyond clock and reset and our output or outputs in this case H, a single output. We sketch our state transition diagram, write the state transition table and output table for a more FSM, which is the kind that we just designed. We write separate tables, a separate state transition table and a separate output table. And we'll show examples of the Mealy FSM where that is combined, a combined state transition and an output table. We select our state encodings, rewrite the state transition table and create a, an encoded state transition table and encoded um, output table. Write Boolean equations for the next state and output logic and then implement the circuit.